wasn't gonna make a video on the topic. The problem is, it takes me way too long to make them. And with the speed that things are moving, by the time I did, they would already be outdated. So, instead of a longer video going into the details, this will just focus on possible outcomes. I'm sure we're all aware of the basics. The Iranian general Soleimani was killed by a US airstrike recently. Soleimani was an extremely interesting person, so much so that I almost made a video on him and the Quds Force that he ran about a year ago. For those who don't know, and it's a bit unconventional, the Quds Force is a unit of the Iranian Armed Forces, specifically of the IRGC. It contains between 10 to 20,000 members and carries out guerrilla warfare, sabotage, and other operations to further Iran's goals and objectives outside the country, similar to that of special forces of other nations, but on a larger scale. Soleimani and the Quds Force have been extremely active over the last four decades, especially in the Syrian civil war. I'm not going to go into detail on him, as he is a very controversial figure. His actions are viewed as that of a liberator and a freedom fighter, or that of a terrorist, depending on which side of the argument you fall on. But with this death, Iran has threatened to retaliate on the US. Iran has many ways it could do this. I've talked about Iran's military capabilities in the past, with numerous missiles and its control of non-state groups like Hezbollah, which it could use to hit the US at any number of locations in the region. The US has many bases, embassies, and other sites well within the range of Iran's forces. And sure enough, it happened. Iran launched strikes on two US military bases in Iraq, with a reported 22 ballistic missiles. Satellite imagery is still coming in as of recording this, but the damage appears to be minimal. Many of the missiles appear to have missed or failed. More imagery may change that as time goes on, but from what we can see, there is damage to a couple of temporary hangars, one hit a runway or a ramp, and one in what looks like a vehicle yard. Also very important was there was reported to be no US casualties, and President Trump appears to be using this to de-escalate. Iran can say they responded for the death of Soleimani, and the US can claim that minimal damage was done and had no loss of life. But tensions are still high. The US really doesn't have much ability to defend against these kind of attacks. No known Patriot air defense sites were located there, and Iran has so many of these short-range missiles that it could easily overwhelm them if they did. But for now, things appear to be de-escalating. Before the strike, Trump threatened Iran back, saying that he has 52 targets ready to hit if Iran does retaliate. He didn't say what those targets were, or even what type of targets they would be. Would it be an all-out strike to try to eliminate Iran's ability to respond? 52 targets is nowhere near enough for that. You need closer to 5200 targets, so they would likely be symbolic targets, those that are not strong enough to elicit a retaliation. And that is true for both sides. Despite the tough words, neither one wants an all-out war. The question is, what action can you take? It has to be strong enough to show that you mean business, sends a strong message, and saves space in front of your own people. But at the same time, not so strong that you force the other's hand into responding and then collapsing into an all-out war. There's a very fine line between those. We've seen US responses to what the US says were chemical weapon attacks in Syria. Those strikes launched by the US then were chosen very carefully to send a message, but not to provoke Syria and Russia into responding kinetically. With Iran, the stakes are even higher. Where Syria had very little ability to strike the US back, and Russia knew that them acting was too risky and starting a larger conflict with the US, Iran is different. They have shown that they can and will respond. So we do not know exactly what those 52 targets are, but they are likely very low-level targets that would cause minimal damage and loss of life, and would be more symbolic than strategic. This would be in the hopes that a message would be sent that the US means business and is willing to strike, but not so strong enough to warrant a full response from Iran. It's very interesting. The leaders between the two countries are similar. Both clearly believe in showing force in response to force. When the UK seized an Iranian ship in the Strait of Gibraltar, which it said was violating sanctions by delivering oil to Syria last summer, Iran quickly responded by seizing a UK vessel in the Persian Gulf. Trump has done the same. It's an attempt to scare off the other side, showing that any action will have a response. It's an effective, yet extremely risky strategy which could very quickly devolve into an all-out war. A good example of this could be the Cuban Missile Crisis during the early 1960s, when, in response to the US attempted invasion of Cuba and placement of US missiles in Turkey, the Soviet Union placed ballistic missiles in Cuba, 
Then in response to that, the US issued a naval blockade of Cuba, threatened to sink any Soviet ships that headed to the island. Things escalated very quickly. It could very easily have ended in a war. At the same time, with the stakes rising so fast and war seemingly unavoidable, it becomes a very sobering moment. Both sides are faced dead on with the reality that war is about to happen. And this could be a good thing, causing both sides to reconsider their actions and agree to come together and talk things out in a way which would not have happened without this happening. So really, we have to wait and see. There is an awful lot of people and media outlets out there saying that war is inevitable. Personally, I don't think that's the case. I think that type of talk is also dangerous. At the same time, it can also be useful really showing the severity of these actions. If I had to guess, which I know is risky to do, I'd say there may be a few more tit for tats back and forth, small scale attacks and airstrikes, strong words being exchanged, but nothing major. Just enough so each side shows that it's serious and then things will calm down again. But we'll have to wait and see. This episode's sponsor, The Ridge Wallet. This sponsor was absolutely perfect for me. A few months ago, I stopped using my old, bulky wallet. It was really annoying to carry around. When I heard of Ridge Wallet, it was a perfect fit for me. I've been using it myself, and I'm going to continue to use it. It's small, sleek, looks good, and works great. Another great thing is it's guaranteed for life. So if it wears down or loosens, you're covered. It also came with this mini screwdriver to tighten the screws if necessary. You also get 10% off with promo code Covert Cabal, no space. Go check them out. That is the Ridge Wallet. 